Hello everyone, what's up? I'm Stratos Ayani from Graphius.com and today I am back with another Lightroom tutorial. In this uh, episode I am going to show you how I processed a photo of mine which was uh, taken last year and it was a project, a, a, a portrait project let's say, which had as a subject a car and its driver. Oops, sorry about that. And uh, as you can see, we have a rather flat file. We don't have too much contrast, we don't have too much vibrance, but we are going to fix all this within Lightroom. Now, my first and main concern is to bring back some colors uh, within this photo and make them more um, pumped and prominent. And the next thing that I want to do once I fix the colors and the tonality of this photo, I want to draw the attention a little more to the subject and into this area where my flash hits the car and the driver as well. So, without, without, well, without any further delay, let's jump into Lightroom. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open the basic panel and I'm going to drag the exposure slider just a little bit to the left in order to make the colors a little more dark a little darker, let's say, which will make them look somehow a little better. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go to the blacks slider and I'm going to drag it slightly to the left as well in order to add black to all the colors. This will bring a, a little more saturation to the colors and it will make them a little darker, but don't worry about that, we will fix it in a second. Next thing, I'm going to uh, pump up the clarity just a little bit, which will A, increase the detail within my photo, and B, it will increase the contrast just a little bit. So, I'm increasing the detail plus the contrast as well, which is always good when you have a flat file like this. I'm going to also increase the vibrance, but just a little bit in order to get some overall better color and vibrance within my photo. Now, I don't push this too much because I'm going to fix the sky by using the dedicated hue saturation and the lightness sliders over here. So, I'm going to fix the colors, but first I'm going to the tone curve panel. I am at the linear option over here, which will allow me to left click here and here and create two new control points. I'm going to take the first control point and I'm going to drag it downwards and to the right. This will make my darks a little darker and I will take this uh, control point and drag it upwards and to the left. Now, as you can see, this makes the bright areas just a little more bright. If you make the darks darker and the bright areas a little brighter, you increase the contrast within your photo. So, uh, you can use the tone curve in order to do this kind of S curve in order to control the contrast and fix the contrast within your photo. And it is a lot better than the contrast slider because you have, uh, by using tone curve, total control of your blacks or dark areas and light areas individually. So you have a lot more flexibility and control. So I'm going to play around just a little bit with this and let's see, so far we have this, which is the before, and this is the after. Now, I'm going to the Hue Saturation Luminance panel over here and I'm going to the Luminance section first. I'm going to drag the blue slider to the left just a little bit in order to decrease the luminance of the sky, which will make the colors pop a little better. I'm going to do also the same thing with aqua and I'm going to the saturation and increase the saturation at the blues and the aquas as well. So we have now a very strong dark blue sky just like we would have if we could use um, a polarizing filter or if we had shot this photo during the blue hour which is the hour uh, let's say 30 minutes after the sun has gone be below the horizon. Uh, if you shoot at about uh, 15 to 30 minutes after the sun has gone below the horizon, you will see a very dark sky with your eyes, but your camera will capture it in a very uh, interesting way and it will show you a very dark blue sky, something like this. Uh, I'm going again to the 
basic panel and I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit and I think this is it for now. Now, what I want to do is I want to draw the attention here where the flash hits my subject. So I'm going to select and left click the adjustment brush tool as you can see and I'm going to increase the exposure all the way up to four stops. I'm going to feather my brush to 100% so it will be uh, a little smoother as I paint and I'm going to disable the auto mask because I don't want Lightroom to automatically choose which things should be affected and which should not. I want to paint freely around my photo so I will disable the auto mask and I will paint where my light slash flash hits my photo. Now, as you can see, the result is horrible and this is because I have the exposure slider all the way high to plus four stops. But I'm doing this only to have a clear view of what will be affected. So once I paint the area that I want to affect, I'm going to return the exposure slider all the way down to zero and I'm going to slightly increase it until I have the result that I want. And as you can see, with a 0 0.75, it looks a lot better. Another thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to raise the shadows just a little bit in order to bring back detail from the shadow areas here where the flash hits. And I'm going to increase the saturation in order to make the grass over here and the red lines uh, that exist within the car to look better. But don't overdo it because you see what happens with the saturation slider, so you just need to increase it just a little bit. And that's it. On a final note and movement, I'm going to go to the camera, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go to the effects panel and I'm going to drag the amount slider just a little bit to the left in order to create a vignette. I'm going to feather it a lot because I don't want to have a circle like this and draw the attention of the viewer to the vignette instead of uh, my subject. I'm going to drag the midpoint a little bit to the left as well in order to close down the vignetting. I'm going to feather this a lot. And I'm going to probably play with the midpoint just a little bit to see what I can get. And I think this is just about right. Final, final thing, I can play with the temperature, I don't want to do this right now, but if I wanted to, I could go a little bit to the left in order to make the colors uh, colder, or I could go to the right in order, to make the, in order to make the colors warmer, but I will leave it as it is. So, before, this is the photo we had, it is quite flat, it's not flattering at all, there is no focal point with it, and this is the after in just a few moments. Um, if you play around with Lightroom a little uh, longer, you will see that you can get even better results, but I think you get the point on, on how I fix this photo. So you can try these techniques on your own with your own uh, photos and see what you can come up with. Always shoot raw if you want to preserve uh, most of the detail that your camera can capture in your lens and also if you have difficult lighting situations like this one where we have our subject backlit, we have a lot of dark areas and there isn't so much light to work with. Um, I think this concludes today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you have any questions, please let me know by, a comment, by the comments below. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video if you think that uh, it will help any other people besides you and uh, let's introduce as many people uh, to as many people as we can my freaking Greek English accent. Thank you very much again for your time watching, take care and until next time, happy shooting, ciao! <laughs>